Hey, what's up, fellow air breathers? I'm Dave We Like, and today we're talking about Flow 2, the personal air pollution sensor. Now, this is a game changing piece of technology, and I really just want to emphasize it's that big of a deal. Go ahead and pick it up right now. You don't even need to watch the rest of this video. But for those of you who want to learn some more, here's a general idea of what's going on. Air sensing technology, it's been around for a while. You can go on websites, you can go and use apps on your phone to check out the general air quality in your particular neck of the woods, but understand that that particular sensor is probably miles away from you. So what good does that do you? So what Flow 2 is all about is that you get to carry around a personal air sensor that's gonna last for about 24 hours. Whether or not it's PM1, 2.5, 10, VOCs, or NO2, you can monitor it all within this little device. So let's go ahead and unbox it and take it all out. Very first thing, of course, is the Flow 2 sensor. And what you'll see, it's very lightweight, it's very slim, and I really think the design is cool. It's not waterproof because, of course, it's got to constantly be taking air on in. And let's go ahead and see what's on the other side. So you get a little charging uh, dock to go along with it, along with a USB-C cord. Now, thankfully, the Flow 2 doesn't require that you charge with the dock. You can go ahead and plug the USB-C cord straight on into the Flow 2 sensor itself. So the first step to set this guy on up is you got to plug it in, charge it up, then make sure on your phone you've downloaded the app. You've got to go ahead and create an account as the very first step with your email address and password, all that jazz. And then we have to install Flow and basically allow it to pair with our phone via Bluetooth and give it GPS permissions. Then we have to push the touch sensitive button on the Flow device itself to wake it up and begin the pairing process. And of course, once our Flow is detected, let's select it and then let's just wait for it to pair up. And it looks like there is an update to the Flow all right, it looks like our flow is now paired to the phone. And so now it's just gonna give us some quick little tips to go ahead and do to make sure that the flow is fully charged by placing it on the dock. And of course, giving us some quick suggestions that we could go ahead and wear the flow. And once again, the flow does not like water, dust, and shocks. You gotta protect it at all costs. So the flow does wanna know our location in which I've said it to all the time. And then it looks like we are in and the flow will start inputting information into the app over time. So I'll just have to kind of wait for it to start populating. So there is a warm up period that you've got to go ahead and do. Once that time period has passed, you can see that we've got our battery levels and it does alert us that whether or not the flow is accessing our Bluetooth as well as GPS and what the pollution sensor is telling us. And what's really neat about Flow is that you can quickly kind of glance through city by city to see what's going on pollution wise all around the world. You could change the map to really focus in on PM 2.5, 10, NO2, or O3. The map itself will tell you exactly when this information was last populated, as well as the various colors indicate the air quality itself. And you can see the air quality street by street. If you've got a commute, for example, whether or not you're walking or riding a bicycle, you could then use your flow to see what the air quality is along your route. So flow will automatically activate the GPS when you start moving. So I use my flow walking around my neighborhood just to understand what was going on? Which street should I really be walking on at that particular moment in time? And you can see the difference between one street and the street right next to it is very significant. And it's impacted based on, for example, you know, just the amount of traffic that is there at the time. Which to me, it really didn't seem like there were all that many cars on the road. But the significance in air quality was very dramatic. I just wanted to show you how quick and easy it is to just you know understand what's going on with the air quality around you at any point you can just tap it and it'll light on up and tell you what the air quality is with a color right so green obviously indicating you're good air quality is fine but then you know as you get to yellow red and then eventually purple purple is just terrible 
So you don't want to be outdoors during that time. So I also wanted to take Flo2 around town. So what I did was uh, I went to my local outdoor malls. Being outdoor malls with, you know, plenty of fresh air, the air was terrible. And it did take Flo2 near a freeway in which, you know, we all think that should be bad. And it was bad, but I honestly thought it would be worse than what it was. And I think, again, that was a very interesting and unique pattern of the wind because it was pushing the particles uh, in it the opposite direction from where I was standing. So I wasn't really getting the brunt of it. That information matters because that could be a part of town that you really want to avoid if you're walking or bicycling around. Or that could be a place that you just don't want to live because you're so close to, you know, air pollution. Sadly, I didn't have flow to on July 4th because my city was just set ablaze. There were so many fireworks and that led to an extreme amount of pollution. So I checked it on my phone via other apps, but those air sensors are miles away from me. So I really didn't get the sense of like, well, when can I actually go outside? Because that following day on July 5th, it still said the air pollution was terrible. Even though I would look outside and see kind of a blue sky, I'm like, well, what's going on exactly? Is the air quality bad? Again, that's why having a personal air sensor is so important. Because then you could go ahead and go outside, test it out, see what's going on. And then be like, oh, okay, I can leave the house or, you know, maybe I should wait a couple more hours just so that you don't start coughing and, you know, sneezing and all that sort of stuff that could happen with having bad air quality. Just to showcase the extreme unhealthy air quality, I went ahead and had a little campfire with my friends in which I shoved this air sensor straight into the plume of smoke. And uh, clearly it turned purple, in which that means it's very bad. And uh, thanks for stating the obvious. So Flow 2 clearly works and it's really easy to just go ahead, put it around your backpack or belt or even I've been carrying it around with my keychain and just dangling outside of my pocket so it can always intake that air and let me know, you know, what's going on right then and there. Anyway, thanks for watching this video about Flow 2. If you have any questions about it, make sure to leave them in the comment section below and I'll go ahead and answer as well as subscribe to this channel for more videos coming soon.